bribery never hurts. Yeah, no, I know. You know. Exactly the same for each. You think they'll like it? I mean, I'm uh, a little bit out of my depth here. Oh, I just want to get it right, you know, start on a good note. No, no, I can't believe it either. Um, well, I just got something to sort out here. Shouldn't take long. Then I'll go home, I'll get changed, and I'll be right over. Yep. All right. Bye. The DPP needed those cash notes first thing. I'll take him over now, Sarge. Yeah, 8 o'clock is not first thing. Well, Matt usually takes them over, but I forgot he's off today. Simon, you're running on three cylinders these days. Fire it up. Yes. You do the hit. Christmas present. I didn't know what to do. I... When I got up, she was... I'm sorry to be a nuisance. Hey. Oh, no more pain now. Is she taking her medication? Oh, for all the good it was doing her. Go and make some calls. Do you want to stay with her? Pat's on the back. Wolfie's in a good mood. Not with Simon. Left me phoning you too. Detective Mapplethorpe? 
Uh, good morning, ma'am. No, no, not too busy at the moment. We're really good friends. We've um, known each other for about 20 years. Sandy's been sick for the last five or six. Um, still not sure what you want from me, ma'am. I want to circumvent some of the unpleasant stuff. Peter's been through hell, especially the last 12 months, and the last thing he needs is blue uniforms and marked cars all over the place. Of course, but if you're close, then... Sometimes it is possible to be too close, Detective. So the death wasn't unexpected? We thought she had another six months, but... Cancer, as you can tell. I'd like you to take his statement gently and uh, prepare the report for the coroner's office. Right, ma'am. Peter. Detective Mapplethorpe will stay with you. I'll be back later on and I want you to come with us tonight. Mum, I gotta go. Oh, darling, did you have breakfast? Yeah, toast and cereal. I left some out for you. Oh, I don't think I'll have time, darling, but thank you anyway. You never eat breakfast. <laughs> oh, hi. I'm Joshua. Josh. Hi, Josh. I'm Jennifer. Really sorry, Uncle Pete. Hey. You get off to school, I'll be fine. I'll get myself to soccer training. Oh, jeez. No, don't worry about it. No, right. Thanks, babe. See you, Mum. Good boy. See you. I better go too. Hey. What happens now? I, I want to see where they've taken her. Yeah, you get dressed and we can do that. And uh, then we'll chat about what happened. What happened? My wife had cancer for five years and then she died. That's what happened. DBP were pleased to see you, were they? They should come here and collect their own bloody... I mean, we work hard enough catching the bad guys, and then half the time they stuff up the prosecutions and we have to go out and catch them all over again. Am I right or am I right? Uh, both. Uh, cheer up. I think one of your girlfriends has been trying to call you. in trouble. Oh, yeah, you heard the oh, message. Oh, come on, Sire. It sounds like a pub or a club or something. At ten past eight in the morning, I checked the message details. It was his mobile, Sarge. You've called back? Yeah, out of service. And he old Sparks signed off on that hit and run yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, he took off straight away, saying something about our dry cleaners. What time? Come on, Simon, what time? It's a bit early, Sarge. It's about four-ish. Did he mention anything about a meeting or anything he was following up? Oh, hang on, hang on. I mean, let's not get ahead of ourselves. He's on a roster day off, isn't he? Yeah, supposedly. Oh, well, he's hit an early opener and he's written himself off. No. I'd hear it in his voice, Sarge. He's in trouble. All right, get over to his place, see what you can find out. Uh, Simon, phone. I'll see if I can get a fix on that message where it came from, just in case. Yeah. Been knocking for ages, Sarge. No way he's in there. Yeah, we've checked with a couple of his neighbours. They haven't seen him either. Look, I'm going to go and find the caretaker. Break in? No way! Oh, we're in. Spice is gonna have your balls when he sees that door. There's not a lot of room. The rain took him to the cleaners, eh? We need dry cleaners. Slacks and a jacket. Not a suit like he wears to work. Well, you said he's on an RDO. Maybe he was going out. He wanted to look nice. Smart and casual. Looks like he put his Jamie Oliver impersonation on hold. Yeah, hang on a minute, Sarge. We're just checking out the place. Chockies. And a doll. A blow-up doll, I'd understand. Hey, no, no, he's not here, Sarge. We don't know where he is. We'll talk to the other neighbours, see what you can find. I'll check his day book. Yeah, anyway. Look, maybe he sounded slow because he's pissed. What pub does he go to? All of them, and he's not pissed. He's hurt, OK? Look, I'm just saying, Simon, well, that Why was he asking for help, Duncan? To order another beer? Hey, excuse me. 
Miss Pillsbury. Uh, it's Kelly, isn't it? Yeah, what's going on? Where's Wilton? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. What are you doing here? Well, he was supposed to meet me this morning. Early. He's um, hired a little motor lodge thing. We're going to have a day on the river, a picnic with my girls. He hasn't met them yet. Mm. Well, that makes sense of an entry in his day book. I tried his mobile, but it was out of service. But the thing is, I spoke to him really early this morning and he said he was on his way. I mean, it's a big deal for all of us, especially the girls. Well, maybe he changed his mind about the day. Got cold feet about meeting my kids, you mean? Well? No. He said something about needing to sort something out. I mean, he wouldn't just bail on us. It's not the Wilton Sparks I know. Get me to the hospital. I'm gonna die. There! There you are, fat man. But not soon. You see, your gut shot. Gonna take you hours to go. Well, you're not too thrilled about that, eh? Please. I need water. Yeah, I can imagine. Must be sore. Looks like the bullet went in. Right about there. <laughs> Mix of the blood, I'd say you'd last till about, ooh, dark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm not going anywhere until I find out what's happened to him. That could take some time. That's all right. I'm happy to wait. Mm. Hey, listen. So, maybe he bonked her, OK? And uh, he had a good time. She started talking kids and daddies, and then he's just gone and done a runner. The phone call doesn't suggest that. Neither do the dolls. He bought a kid's presents, mate. Senior Sergeant, the report on that phone that you wanted. Ah, thank you. Did they source the message? Uh, try Outer West. Close as they could get it. Well, it's a start, at least. Anything on the call logs in the past 24 hours? Nothing useful. Ah, uh, this is Senior Sergeant Sparks' phone. Now, uh, what's going on? Uh, Sparks has gone missing. Missing? Sarge, what are you doing here? Came in to help. You're on an RDO. I called him. I told him what was going on. We we don't know what's going on as yet. Still no news? No, nothing. We do know he went shopping after he left work yesterday. We found some dockets for some dolls he bought last night, about two hours after he left. And what time was that? Uh, about four. Well, have we thought about Lorraine? I mean, maybe she's an option. What? What, she got wind of the new girlfriend? A love triangle. Sparksy has a girlfriend? Yeah, I tried the ex-wife. She's in Queensland. What girlfriend? <laughs> Remember Kelly Pillsbury, the solo mum, the one who slapped him. Added a bit of tickle to the slap, did she? Thank you, you've been very kind. I still need to get a statement from you, Mr. Murdoch. Peter, yeah, I know. There's something I have to do first. You've known the superintendent for a long time. Oh, she and Sandy liked each other the first time they met. After Bernice's husband left, she did it tough for a bit with Josh to raise on her own. So you helped out? Eventually, we were like one family in two houses on the same street. The pain Sandy was in was terrible. Terrible. She wanted to die. Did you help her? That's what you've been thinking, isn't it? Did you assist your wife in suicide, Mr. Murdoch? We discussed it. 
she was afraid of dying, so I made her a cup of tea, put in a, a lot of honey, and chopped up a whole lot of tablets and dissolved them. And she drank it. And I told her that I loved her and talked to her about all sorts of things. When we met and what we dreamed about, <laughs> she fell asleep in my arms. I fell asleep too, just waiting for her to go. When I woke up, she was still warm. But that was only because I was still holding her. So no, I didn't assist her. I didn't think she knew what I'd done. I didn't tell her. You guys might want to see this. I thought I'd check out our security footage. Sparks are leaving yesterday, Alvo. Hold it there. Who's that woman? Well, I checked with Wayne, who was on duty. She just turned up, asking for Wilton Sparks. Wouldn't give a name, so Wayne refused to call him. And she waited and buttonholed Sparksy on the way out. He knows her? Yeah, so do I. But I don't know from where. A trial, an old case, something. Maybe Sparks has got two women on the go. Let's hope so. Did they leave together? No, she leaves first. Before that, they speak for a couple of minutes, and, uh, here, yeah, she gives him something. What is that, a piece of paper? That's an evidence bag. There's a clear shot of the woman in a previous frame. Get one lifted. Let's check Sparks' old case, run a check, see if we can find her. Boy, old case, isn't it? What's to say this isn't something current, new? I've seen that woman before, way back. I'll check my files as well. Speak to Kelly Pillsbury again, see if Wilton may have said anything to her that might help us. I'll do that. I was there when they met. Please don't lie to me. I need to know what's going on, what you're thinking. Sparksy left a message on my phone. Uh, he sounded bad. We've only been able to trace roughly where the call came from, so... I knew something is going on. He wouldn't let us down like this. He's too caring. Wilton, right. You really don't know him very well, do you? Not as well as he knows you. He talked about you quite a bit. He said you were going to be a really good detective. <laughs> going to be. Please have a seat. This morning, Sparks, he left a, a message on your phone saying he had something to sort out. Did he say what it was he had to do? No, um, just that he would be at my place soon and... Well, he was excited. He'd bought presents for the girls. The, the dolls, right? You have to find him, Simon. Something bad's happened to him. I know it has. You knew, didn't you, ma'am? Knew what? That there was a chance that this could be an assisted suicide? Yeah. Well, Sandy was terribly ill. Peter is a loving, compassionate man. Helping her to die would always have to be a possibility, I suppose. What if it was more than an assisted suicide? In what way? What if he gave her those pills without telling her? That would be murder, wouldn't it? Well, technically, yes. Perhaps. Morally, emotionally, in this particular case, knowing these two people, like I do, it would still be an act of compassion. Is that your personal view? Personal being the operative word, detective. What do you expect me to do? Expect. What do you want me to do? What I want has no bearing on this. You're the one handling this. You have to make the decision. It's better you than me. Decisions like that can make or break a career. Hey, hang on, hang on. What? Waverly's got a kid. Yeah. How old? Don't know. 13, 14. 
boy. What? I didn't even know she was married. Where's the husband? She probably ate him. You know, she set me up on this. Yeah, of course. She didn't want to get involved herself, so she set me up. She wants it at arm's length in case it gets ugly. What are you going to do? I should log this as evidence. But I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what, she... Gee, Sparky's had a colourful past, too. Hey. Talk about a checkered career. I thought I had a few flags on my file. What's with Sparksy? He's gone missing. What? This woman was captured on CCTV footage in the foyer. Annie Minote. The woman in the footage, one Sheila Colvin. She's not a crim, she is the mother of one, a double murderer. Five years ago, her son, Paul Colvin, raped and killed two women. Sparks nailed them, most likely before he could chalk up number three. Grab Simon, get over to that address and be careful. Why, what's the danger? Paul Colvin would still be inside, wouldn't he? He's doing life, but it's quite possible that his mother holds a grudge against Sparks for putting him there. So, like I said, be careful. Oh, he's satisfied, you old bitch. Well, why don't you look at me? You win. I'll take her. No worries. Sheila, isn't it? Police. Uh, told her to leave us alone. Sit down. I told you. To tell us. Well, you and didn't even want me to go and see Mr. Sparks, but he'd been so kind to us before. Yeah, he's the only one who was. We were treated like bloody lepers. What was the piece of paper you gave him? I, I found it crumpled up under some boxes in the garage. Yeah, I... yeah, we're moving again. Again. Do you know how many times we've moved in the past five years? Three times. And it's always the same story. Somebody finds out some press bastard comes sliming the around. Piece them. of paper. It's a page from a street directory. When um when Paul, when when he killed those uh, two girls, he marked where he had buried them on the maps and and Mr. Sparks found the book and that's what helped them to locate the bodies. It had to have been torn out of the original book a long time ago, and... And I... I thought perhaps the Paul had killed someone else. <laughs> I didn't know who else to go to. He promised me he'd look into it. He'd, he'd keep it quiet. The page had a mark on it. Where was it? Do you remember? Yeah. We'll take the front. Take the garage. Oh, no. Garage. This blood's just about dry. It's been here for hours. I'll call the Sarge. What are you doing? Pulling the sim. Make sure that it's his. Hey, Matty, you better tell Wolfie that this place used to be a meth lab. A big one. G'day, you got Wilton Sparks. If you're cute, leave a message. Sparks are found looking for a dead body, but he walked into something else. Easier just to shoot him again. Yeah, but this is all fun, right? Come on, bro, it's a bloody classic. On the scrap heap. <laughs> yes! Wakey, wakey, piggy. Listen to me. My dad died in a paddock in the middle of nowhere with a copper's bullet in his chest. 
No one's gonna find you, you fat man. <laughs> Die weeping! Lab is your area of expertise, Terry. Okay, so your thinking is that Wilton walked in on these bastards while he's following up a lead on Noel murder case? Yes. Coincidence or related? The few of your people could take a look at the scene, start making some sense of who these lab rats might be. They left their equipment. No, but just enough packaging and residual chemicals for us to identify as a lab. Otherwise, pretty well cleaned out. So they didn't leave in a hurry after they shot him. Apparently not. He was there a while. A lot of blood. Bloody hell. Took you a while to brief Bernice, didn't it? We didn't know what we had at first. Yeah? It's lucky she had the nouse to call me. What's the story? Look, I'm across most meth dealers in town. Not many of them have the guts to shoot a police officer to protect their product and then take their time packing up. I mean, they'd have to be truly mad bastards. This might help. Join us, fine. Any ideas? Gray. Yeah, I got more than an idea. I'll get back to you. I'll just get that analysis. And while you're waiting on it, go through the surveillance reports and find out when the last time we had Graham and Tommy Coombs on the radar. Yeah, well, just get your bum back there and do it. My guys are on the Sparks, you see. Residue from that meth house. Maybe we can confirm the cook's ID from his recipe. Come on. Ease up, Freeman. We're cool, are we? Huh? I could take a leak in safety. We're never going to be cool, Jobs. Take that down. We don't have a murder victim, not yet. Yeah, he's right, Matty. Oh, so you finally agree he's not pissed in a pub somewhere? Yeah, I do. I was wrong, OK? He's a tough old bugger. He'll be fine. Yeah, right. We're going to find him, Si. OK? Detective Mapplethorpe. Oh, Mrs. Wolf. Um, I'm looking for my husband. He's with the superintendent, I think. There's been a bit of a situation. Someone's gone missing. Right. Well, same here. Um, tell him I came by, would you? Looking for him? Sure. Dear Sir Sparks. Yeah, I've emailed this picture to all on board computers, and uh, I think maybe we should send it to those foot patrols too. Yeah, great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sarge, any news? No, not as yet. What is it? Uh, your wife was here looking for you, and she seemed a bit upset. Yeah. Yeah, she would be. Thank you. Also, I was in here leaving you that note. There are no prints in the house. Great. Thank you, Jennifer. And, Sarge, if you've got a moment, I need to talk to you. Sure. What about? Peter Murdoch, Superintendent Waverley's friend. Yeah, the one whose wife died. Yeah. He assisted her in her death. More than that, he administered a lethal dose of barbiturates without her knowledge. I don't know what to do. I understand why he did it. It's an act of love. Sometimes, uh, Jennifer, that's what murder is. And if it is murder, there are laws to deal with it. Compassion is for the courts if they deem it appropriate not for detectives. Why don't you speak to Superintendent Waverley about them? I have. She was very close to them, the Murdochs. Wolf. Terry. Yes. 
Terrific. You are worth your weight. Yeah, we're on our way. Thank you. Okay, listen up. Graham and Tommy Coombs, brothers, meth dealers. I've been running them through the sieve for months, still haven't got enough on them. They keep slipping surveillance, turning up somewhere else. Just reconnected with them. They're in there kicking up their heels. How do we know these guys are the ones? Well, the grey on the Sparks, his message was a bit of a clue, darling. And if they have got their own lab, they're shifting locations which would fit with the Sparks' scenario. Plus, they hate coppers. Their old man was shot by one. How do you want to play this? The old-fashioned one. I don't know anything about any meth lab, and I've never heard of this Wilson bloke. Wilson, Sparks, detective, senior sergeant, homicide, a police officer. Get out of my face. You got nothing on us. If you want to charge us with something, charge us. Otherwise, we get a lawyer in here and we walk. This is not going to get it. Uh, He's going to get a lot of money. Danny? Some, some bottles, packets, and the blood. These guys aren't as dumb as they look. All Jarvis' has mob have got so far is rubber glove smudges. This gun. Yeah, I found it in the toilets in the pub. It's been fired recently. And there's blood on the end of the barrel. What did you do? Hit somebody with it? Hey, I found it. Having tests run on the blood, Tommy. We can get DNA done, too. Yeah, not before Christmas. He's right. Sparks, he'll be cold by the time we even find out if the blood on the gun's his. Getting nowhere with our bloke. Same as the others. And we need a button to press, something to hold over them. <laughs> something they care about. You know these moguls, Terry. Think. This is, uh, make it quick. No nice guy stuff, OK? I want a good scared. <laughs> Please get in the car. What? Get in the car I now. Can't. What am I supposed to do? I said get in the no. car now. Shut up. No. Get in the car. Get in the car now. Get in the car. 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 Get in the you bastards do this and I'll see your asses. Do what? <laughs> you lay one finger on me and I'll have you. Hey! What's hey. this? This is your missus, isn't it? No, they're not married. They're just shacked up. Oh, right. I mean, she's, uh, she's pretty tasty, this one, isn't she? What's she doing there? What do you think she's doing, you stupid? Let's see. Huh? She's family, right? Her and the kid. Just like Sparks' family to us. Take a good long look, Gray. Could be the last time you ever see either of them. Well, you could tell us where Sparks is. Or by the end of the week, your little girlfriend here, she's gonna end up in the lockup, just like you and your mum old brother. And your kid'll end up in foster care. Permanently. <laughs> He's just a baby, you can't do that! He's my kid! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your father of the year, aren't you? So where's Sparksy? Tell us. Better pray he's still kicking dickhead. Come on, mate. 
Bring that uh, ambulance in here, man, up to this point. Uh, is this the right road? No, they all the same to me. So which car is it? Was it on the left or was it on the right? Different car. Make, model, colour. You must remember the colour. Simon! Car. Where is it? Just make it easy, mate. Where is it? Make it easy. He's not going to be much use to us if you knock him out, Simon. Where is he? Where is he? Joiner. Calm down. Calm down. Or you are out of here. You hear me? Over here! Hurry up! Come on, quick! Let it through! Let's get in there. What's his name? Sparks. The DSS Wilton Sparks. Is he alive? Superintendent. Detective Mapplethorpe. Hello. Hello. I need a word. Can't this wait? No, it can't. Mom, we're going to be late. Yeah, well, just wait for me for a minute, darling. But what happens? I'll be one minute. Nice. I need to be with him. This is the first time he's had to go to a funeral. This won't take long, ma'am. He didn't return my calls over the weekend. No. I need you to know where this is heading. Where's that exactly? I'm going to charge him. I don't have a choice, do I? What do you want from me, Mapplethorpe? Absolution? No, you're the last person I'd come to for that. You put this on me because you didn't want to do it yourself. I put this on you because I thought it was an assisted suicide because he is my friend. And I wasn't sure if I would be able to do the right thing. I knew you would. That it's turned out to be something more is a tragedy. It's another tragedy. Um, I'll keep Peter with Joshua and I overnight and I'll bring him in in the morning, if that's all right. Of course. I'm sorry. So am I. Detective. I finally got to meet the girls this morning. Not the best way to do it. How did they, uh, like the dolls? Got the impression I should have gone the Barbie route. It's a learning curve. I'm just gonna get us a, a cup of tea and give you a chance to talk. You, you don't have to go. No, 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 it's fine. Take your time. Go get enough of me. How you feeling? Sore. I lost half my gut. Not a weight loss program I'd recommend. They find a third body at the house. X marked the spot, did it? No, it didn't. We grilled Colin for the weekend. He let us chase our tails for two days. And he finally told us there was no third victim. Doesn't make any sense. What about the cross on the map? It's where he intended to bury his next one. He's number three. He said you caught him before he got a chance to kill her. Like you really are a good detective, Sarge. So you just came in to tell me what a great copper I am, did you? No, I just want to see how you're doing, you know. Crap, you're still thinking about the gun that guy put to your head. You came here to remind yourself that this could easily be you one day. I don't know. Um, maybe. I... I'm not sure. 
Well, if you're not sure, you've as good as answered the question, aren't you? Oh, you can live with the risks you can't, son. If you're not in it heart and soul, you shouldn't be in it at all. No shame, no judgment, just the way it is. Hey, so I have Sparky. He's doing okay. When's he getting out? Of the job or hospital? Ha uh ha. -huh. Not for a while. Anyone for coffee? A shot of wheatgrass, I reckon. What? What are you, cow? No, mate, it's uh, good for you. You say he's giving up alcohol, Matty, but I don't see you doing that, do I? Yeah, I'm going to grab a six-pack while I'm down there. Hi, Danny. 